The fifth presenter is Dr. Avinash Ujora. Dr. Avinash Ujora is currently the head of Center for Open and Distance Learning at the Mauritius Institute of Education. He holds a doctoral degree in digitization of curriculum and has been heading major educational technologies projects at, at national level, namely Sans Corée, an early digital learning program. He, ha he has also brought forward innovative initiatives such as CodeCraft, the National Coding Competition for Grade 9 students. Through this competition, his team has introduced concepts such as digital storytelling and robotics for education. He has also headed an MIRC-funded project, Class Vetea. He has published and co-published papers in accredited journals in the field of technology and pedagogy. His keen interest is in finding innovative ways to enhance teaching and learning at various levels. I would now invite Dr. Vicky Avinash Ujoha to deliver his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Odin. So, uh, so my presentation is going to be on the designing of educational videos. Uh, so uh, it's designing because uh, most uh, my, myself and my team, we are from a, an instructional designer's perspective. And at the very onset of the uh, lockdown, uh, we uh, were uh, given the task of designing educational videos for TV uh, to support, to sustain education during the lockdown period. I will come to that in, in greater details during the presentation. So it was not only the Mauritius Institute of Education, the Open University and the Mahatma Gandhi Institute also were uh, given the tasks of designing educational uh, videos for TV uh, for that lockdown period. So uh, educational TV in Mauritius has a long history, if I can say so. Uh, it started very long back in 1971 when the Mauritius College of the Air was set up and one of its mandate was to promote education through mass media. And in 1986, uh, M the MCA merges with the audiovisual unit of the Ministry of Education. And there were further development in, into the uh, promotion of education through mass media and the delivery of, of, of TV lessons. Um, probably some of you uh, still remember that there was uh, uh, the H1N1 outbreak in 2009. And some of you would recall that there were a few attempts made to cope with this outbreak and there were uh, the use of radio and TV to deliver educational programs. Now, uh, the, one, the, the main uh, institution responsible for educational TV uh, became the Open University in 2012 with other uh, functions and other mandates, especially related to higher education. But, uh, Open University has developed a student support program with the assistance of uh, Professor Benera's team from India. So this is a, probably a bit of the background of what has happened uh, down the years with regards to educational TV. However, uh, there has also been a few other aspects that we need to consider that, you know, uh, are both aspects that are uncertain and, uh, and relate to the instability of the current situation, right? So for example, there has been a new curriculum framework. So some of the videos that were the educational TV programs that were did uh, many years back, they were not really useful as far as the curriculum was concerned. Furthermore, there were the introduction of new subjects as well. And Mauritius also has laid a lot of focus on the digitization of curriculum, which means that, for instance, at the MIE, we had invested a lot to design for screens, such as tablets and interactive projector. So we did not pay a lot of attention to designing for TV screens, which is a, altogether another set of skill. And this is what I mean by video making. It remained a niche skill and it was probably not well uh, uh, exploited in our case. And then we tended to believe that there was a new type of learner, the digital native, and most of our efforts were concentrated in, in uh, for example, in, 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 in designing for mobile uh, devices and so on. 
So that, that is the, 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 the context and the background. And suddenly, this came. Okay, and what, what the new term on now is the VUCA world. VUCA means volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So whatever was probably certain and uh, consisted the fundamentals of our actions in education, suddenly also became sources of uncertainty and instability, right? So as all of you uh, around the world and most countries, we were a, in a very uh, tight lockdown situation where movement was restricted. There were no schools, uh, no work, and we had to resort to, to uh, remote working and work from home uh, uh, arrangements. Now, when um, this happened, we had to think how to reach the learners from our homes and with what we had. So then, if you look at the statistics for Mauritius, and it's, it relates a bit to what uh, uh, Dr. Michael had said previously, uh, in Mauritius, we have figures from 2010, households with, with, uh, with TV, it's 96.88%. And the internet penetration is only at 69%. You can uh, see it down here, right? So I think, to my opinion, it was the comeback of the digital divide. It was a term that we thought would die out by its own death. But unfortunately, COVID-19 has brought back the digital divide. So when a decision had to be taken, which media to use, of course, there was no dispute regarding that. We had to use the TV to reach the maximum number of students in their homes. The decision taken, we had to consider other things. The baseline at March 2020, when the lockdown started, for primary education, actually there were no TV programs for grades one to six. The few videos that were available were from a tablet project, they were available, but they were not of broadcast quality because TV broadcast is something else and having a resource on tablet is something else. Furthermore, uh, most tablets were at school. In secondary education, things were a bit more positive. We had the SSP uh, student support portal uh, of the Open University and they had some lessons uh, for grade seven to nine. But there were no programs from grades 10 to 13. And grades 10 to 13 would be actually using uh, uh, remote online teaching and learning via Office 365 Teams and using Zoom. So that was the baseline uh, situation when we started the process of video making. So what we did uh, with the help of the Ministry of Education and the team at the MIE, we constituted a group of teachers who were volunteering to make uh, educational videos for primary schools from their homes. Now, we assessed the situation and obviously, we felt that we had to support them. One of the first thing we did was to create an, a short course on our Moodle platform, our e-learning platform, which was, which was an open course. Uh, a few tips on how to create a video using PowerPoint and you use their mobile phones to make a, a pedagogical video. So these were the material that were shared with them. At the same time, we thought about the challenges of working remotely and we set up a, uh, online uh, OneDrives using a cloud-based system for the sharing and storage of folders which were accessed by the teachers. So when they would design an educational video, they would send it to us through the drive and we would send them for broadcast. We felt that we also had to support them. So we had the WhatsApp group with all of them and we also had a Facebook page, but it was not easy to manage since we had uh, hundreds of messages. And I, if you ask me now how we cope, it's very difficult for me to tell you exactly how things work out. So, what you see here, this long serp serpenting process, is what we actually came out through. So the first step was teachers make, make video on PowerPoints. 
The video was vetted by peers and school inspectors. They were uploaded on the OneDrive. The MI does design vetting from the OneDrive. The MI also does content vetting from the OneDrive. They are sent back to uh, the OneDrive for amendments. Teachers make amendments and upload on the OneDrive. They are reviewed by the MI and finally sent to both cars. So it's a long process. It looks like a snake. It, it was actually like snakes and ladders because the snake could appear and bite you at any step here of the process and it was quite hectic to manage. But we managed even through uh, this long uh, process uh, to make hundreds of videos which were aired on the national team. But this was without challenges. The first challenge that we faced was cultural. Uh, working from home, is definitely not part, was definitely not part of the Mauritian culture. Mauritius is a small island with a tropical climate, so uh, going out, meeting your friends, having social interaction is part of our uh, cultural uh, uh, most. So working from home was, was a big challenge for, uh, for us. So that was an aspect which we had to deal with because the boundaries between uh, your, your home life and your work life, it was not easy to maintain. We also faced technological challenges in the sense that working uh, on cloud-based application, it was not very easy, right? So sometimes we had connectivity issues because we were actually using our domestic connectivity. So it's very much unlike the connectivity that we would have at school, uh, at school level or even at, at the office. Uh, the educators also had technological difficulties in, in, in the sense that their, uh, their, the devices, the laptops that they had, most of them had laptops, did not have uh, the appropriate versions of PowerPoint, for example, to be able to export them as proper videos. Thirdly, we had also content and design issues. Now, given that everyone was under pressure, a few uh, errors happened in, in the content uh, aspect. So it was, I believe, inevitable because teachers were doing their best. Those who were vetting were also doing their best. Unfortunately, it was a, a situation that we had no precedent and it was very difficult for us to, to cope with that. We also had design issues in the sense that the teachers, they were not trained to make videos. So actually things like contrast, uh, using the appropriate font and so on, we, it was quite difficult for us to, to cope with that. And the other part of the design issue is, if I may go back to this process, in, in uh, reality, this process would take a few, uh, a few days, if not a few weeks to do. And we had to squeeze this process, this design process, in a few uh, days or if not hours. So that was the biggest issue that we faced regarding design. Right, so lastly, uh, we also have to consider teacher preparedness. They, well, most teachers use PowerPoint for productivity uh, uh, purposes, not really for making videos. So they were not really prepared, but they were very uh, willing to collaborate and they have learned a lot uh, uh, during uh, this confinement period. It was a sharp learning curve for them. But for the, one of the lessons we've learned is that we have to ensure that teachers are prepared uh, to face such issues uh, in the near future. I will end with what is the new normal? We have devised a new process of video making because we have, uh, now we are ensuring now all videos are script based and we are empowering teachers. We have offered them an online course we have offered them on-the-job training and cut near support, online support via Teams. And given that TV is a pure transmissive mode, we, have, we are making use of uh, more interactive materials, if you can see uh, in the uh, screen here. So actually, this teacher is making use of a software called OpenSanctuary, which is being deployed in an in, on an interactive TV panel. So it makes it more interesting and more appealing to the child. So that's uh, a bit the experience that the MI had during this confinement period. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Ujora, for the presentation. So you gave a brief introduction, a, a brief description of evolution of educational TV in Mauritius. You talk about the VUCA world, 
And then you come back, you talk about the comeback of the digital divide and working remotely. How, what are the challenges that were, that we had? The, you also talk about the video making process during the COVID-19.